Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's 3D the Rap Star, aka is the Benz Man. Make sure you follow me on my new Instagram at it's the Benz Man. That's I T S T H E B E N Z M A N. And you know what we gotta do? We gotta go ahead and get some angles. But before we do that, I wanna welcome the E320 Mercedes Benz to the YouTube channel. Now let's get some angles. And before we start the video of the E320, I will say if I had a chance to get this car again, I would most likely get it again, but just with some minor differences. So let's take a look and go around the car. And in 2004, the bubble lights with the grill with the traditional logo on top. And we are planning to go back to the regular chrome. So with this, we decided to go gold, but we didn't know a person that could actually do gold. So we finally found someone and it didn't come factory gold or we didn't paint it. Someone did it for us. But after a while of just us having it, you can tell it's kind of rusted. Even the back and I am planning to go back to the chrome. I am going to order it. So first things first is I'm going to tell people about this car and what we don't like about it and why you should not buy one of these but like i said at first the disclaimer on this video is this is like one of my best cars besides the cl and i do got more cl videos coming just took the time out to show this car and another thing we did i actually put the mirror color tints on here And this is from having this car over five to six years and the mirror tents hold it up well, no bubbles. And so like I was saying, the disclaimer on this video is the E320 is one of my favorite cars. If I had a chance and I didn't have this car, I would buy it again. But this is for the people to potentially know what's wrong with the cars and the potential problems and what I don't like about this car and why I say you should never buy an E320. But in theory, these are good cars and if you got enough money to pay for these cars and the upkeeping and the maintenance and the repairs and the servicing and whatever is gonna go out on it, then this is a lovely car. It's a good car, it's a daily driver, it's a four door, plenty of space, plenty of room on the inside. So it's a good car, but now let's talk about why I say do not buy an E320. And number one is the headlights. I'm going to say, like, if you just look over time, this is with all cars, though. Over time, the headlights will rust. They will turn yellow. They will go bad. But it's the way the E320 lights sit. So standard lights sit, like, straight up. And, like, these lights are slanted. And so that's the one thing I really don't care for. If you can see how hazy, how cloudy. And over time, like I said, that's what all lights. But these, if you look around on Benz's, a lot you'll see E320 with the dull headlights. And you know, replacing these and getting new ones can run anywhere from like $700 and up. Recently had the ball joints done. It was a squeak coming from the car. Now when you, when you press it down, you don't hear anything, but it was pretty bad. It was to the point where you're driving it and you'll go like, what's wrong with the car? The inside interior for me, I can't go light color again. I get the cars dirty on the inside, and this is like a good color. It's like one of my favorite colors, but if you notice on the CL, it's gray. I'll have to go gray or black because over time, the wear and the dirt just build up.
So it is traditional with the key. I don't know if you guys can really see, you know, the sun is glaring right this way, but it is traditional. You just put the key right in and you will turn it and start it up. And I actually haven't been driving this car because the ball joints, it was the uh, breakdown. And just the radio in this car does not work at all. I remember when I first wanted an E320, like these cars were like the top of the line, you know, mid-sized cars. It was like one of my favorite cars to have, and it still is because it's an E-Class. And I feel like these are the best dr daily drivers for Mercedes. But now I got to go on my little rant. I don't like how the gas is displayed. So the brakes are fixed and the car keeps saying this is a sensor issue. Brake, service brake, visit workshop. And this car left me stranded one time. So the fuel pump is went out. And ever since then, this is the gauge. I don't like how the gauge displays these little black lines. And besides the little black lines, um, sometimes it go out to where you don't even see how much gas you got. And you got to like kind of swerve the car to get the meter to get back on. So another thing is the radio don't work at all. As you see, I'm turning it up nothing we can go to audio radio turn it up nothing they told me about these cars so guys if you are looking for an e320 especially an older one like this is the prices could be attractive but the only downfall about this car would be is the electronics on this car suck and it's just so many problems that these cars go through is why i say do not buy an e320 as i don't think it's worth it especially especially if you were to go to get an old ones now the new ones the e350 the the newer E350s, you know, they seem to have fixed it and they seem to fix the problems and to seem to run pretty solid. And of course the engine mounts are out on this car, as in it's real rough, like idling. And when you're driving, it's not, it actually not that bad. And I think that just go for us getting used to the car and me getting used to the way it feel. But so it's, the, it's engine mount problems. You got ball joints, the control arms go out. The inside, the radio doesn't even work. The gas thing with the fuel pump is out. The interior color is like a lot of stuff about this car. I mean, they are good cars. They run good. They're solid cars. But with so many problems, I just think it's not worth to buy an E320 in the market. As I do like the look of these way better than the previous model where they just looked at all boxy. The previous model was all boxy. And the best thing I used to like about this car was the windows. And you know, that's why I bought the CL. If you guys notice, this was the best part to me that when the windows go down, they all go all the way down. Like on some of the older Lexus, they didn't go all the way down and the, and the frame stopped. And at one point of even getting this car, even I, I was taking it to the shop so much that even my mechanic had told me to get rid of it, which I will make another video explaining why and what he said, that these cars are solid, but they just run into potentially too many problems for a daily driver. And this is where I would have to agree with my subscriber count and people that tell me, oh, just get a Lexus or get a Toyota, which is right with this model. Like the CL is worth the headache, but I don't think the E320 it's worth the headache as being a daily driver when you keep coming out pockets. To me, like the daily driver car is supposed to be the good car, the good everyday car you can drive every day. And which it is, this car is pretty, plenty smooth, it's comfortable, it's everything you could want, but just those problems alone. Like, so now I got to drive places knowing the radio don't work. I got to drive knowing the gas tank module can go out and I can get stuck again. The engine mounts go out. And the list just goes on and on. But this is really my introduction to the E320. So if you guys like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And I will be bringing more videos on the E320 as we just fixed the ball joints on it, got it running. Next will probably be the service and try to fix the engine mounts on it. And yeah, if you guys like the video, I'll keep bringing more of the E320. And I do got another video explaining why I should have got the E55 over the E320. Because if the car is going to have a, all these problems, you might as well go ahead and get the big motor V8 and just pay for that one.